guys so this 09370z it is a nismo even though the clusters are the same basically i just like that it says nismo on there hey isn't it supposed to light up the red is there a where is huh isn't this supposed to like undim it and dim it or whatever i don't know <sighs> Anyways, this one is on UPT 600cc injectors, UPT 3 inch intakes, has a tome, has uh, headers. Did I say 85? I think I did. Does this window work? Pretty good. 324 wheel horsepower, 265 wheel torque. Once again, if you're just joining in to my channel, my one new subscriber every week uh every dyno reads different ours reads on the lower side so you know the number could vary um on what you normally see online 324 here could be 340 somewhere else 350 somewhere else uh maybe 335 you know it just varies every dyno reads different even um between the same brands as well so like between the dyno jets uh between the dyno packs they all read um differently it also depends where you're at so this is it for this one here after that i'm going to do that one today as well the the white one and then the bottom one so we're just waiting for the exact same part for both of those cars um for for two or three days from the customer this guy just brought it in about an hour ago so they're going to go ahead and install that so i could um Tune in on 85 and 1000 cc injectors. This one, um, I believe it also has the 1000 cc injectors on there. And he's also going 85. I have this 2018 Q50 Red Sport sedan. I just finished tuning it. This one was on a JB4 tune before and uh, the motor blew so he came here to get a engine swap and then we took off the JB4 and now it's on Accutech. Just has a dual exhaust, still has the primary cat. It is on 91 stock injectors. On this one there's no baseline, just went ahead and continued, uh, I'm sorry, just went ahead and started tuning it. So 380 wheel horsepower, 419 uh, wheel torque. It is on stock turbos. Not sure what it was making on the JB4, but um, I'm assuming that everyone thought that's probably why it blew up. Or, you know, obviously, again, we already know these, these motors just blow up for no reason. They blow up stock. But uh, it's better to get a custom tune anyway. So, uh, again, now it's on Ecutech. So we'll see uh, what else he does to this car later on. Guys, okay, so I just got off the DM with the owner and uh, I was asking him some questions so for about his car. And I was asking him about the JB4. He said basically as soon as he did the JB4 tune, uh, he actually started having problems with this. So he couldn't even go full throttle. I believe he could cruise around, maybe go half throttle, but uh, he never got to enjoy it, and then I'm not too sure the, the time frame of when after the motor got damaged, but now that makes a lot more sense. Uh, we can kind of pinpoint it to the JB4 device, whatever generic t tuning it had. Um, he told me it was not a custom tune, so you know it's a OST or off-the-shelf tune, uh, generic tune, base map, whatever. That's why custom tuning is always highly recommended these uh base tunes could be just to get you going on your parts but i would tr still try to avoid full throttle but of course nobody listens so yeah we uh i already told him you know jb4 is off cars tune i sent him some pictures and videos uh he's very very excited especially after i told him that i didn't have any issues tuning it so i was able to go full throttle and everything so 
he's going to be even more happier when he actually gets to drive his car again. Because imagine, like, you get a tune, let's just say, and you can't even drive the car because it's... He told me it was uh, hesitating sometimes and sputtering. But, yeah, so that's it for this VR right here. Sauce, spicy sauce. Hey, how's it going, man? This is George coming from Meat. Um, just let you know that your 50 is ready to go. It drives now. It drives good now. And then we found out where the it. noise coming from. It's fresh kicks car. Um, sure. I yeah. wish. I wish. I wish I had a good nationality. <laughs> <laughs> What's up guys, I have this 2015 Q70S, uh, it has full exhaust, stock intakes, stock injector, so it's on 91. This is the same engine as a 370Z G37, it's a 3.7. Uh, this specific model just makes the exact same horsepower as a 370Z engine. So this, this is not the V8 version, um, there's no difference. And other things other than technology and the body and it's heavier so kind of sucks it's heavier and it would make the same power you know but it's got a lot of good stuff I actually really really like it baseline I don't have it on the screen but it was 282 wheel horsepower Baseline was 282 wheel horsepower after the tune, 300 wheel horsepower. We have 18 wheel horsepower peak gains. And then the torque is right there. We're getting 13 and a half torque to the wheels. The maximum torque was 238. Uh, before the tune, is now it's 252 after the tune. And that's it for this one here. All right, so this is the uh, Q50, that's tuna and a five. Man, this looks like weird like it's clean in a way but i don't know and that doesn't and i went ahead and contacted him asked him a couple of questions and he said uh after three pulls after the car got tuned on m5 by the other tuner that that's when the motor um seized up and uh so they already did the motor swap here and we went ahead and left the same tune in there and uh yeah so Nothing happened with the injectors or the fuel system as uh, the other, uh, I guess the uh, other shop was saying, where uh, they got the car tuned at. His same injectors are on there. We even had them tested out while the motor was out, while they were doing the motor swap. And they're actually perfectly fine and they're brand new. Um, again, of course, even a brand new part can come defective. I've seen plenty of injectors with different brands they're brand new, never used, and uh, maybe one or two are defective or uh, the, uh, some of the pins are not correct. So it, it happens, you know, they make so many of these uh, injectors at once. So they can't all be perfect. So, uh, but either way, we tested them and they were good. Um, seems like the fuel pump works. So anyways, to move forward with this, um, we, did not flash the ECU yet. The car idled on the other person's tune. Uh, seemed like it idled normal. I could see some of the things they did to try to get the injectors to work. Uh, I'm not gonna go into detail about that, but I could tell just by looking at, at the log. Uh, the way they did it, it still works, but it's not <laughs> recommended. But um, it, that will now blow your motor, the way they, they set up the uh, idling system. Um, I would say mm, zero problems there, but I prefer not to do it that way. Um, I just not good anyways so on full throttle is where the car really leans out really really bad uh, so the car uh, was sputtering and uh, it does struggle once you get to around like 4,000 rpm and up it, it struggled um, to move the uh, the engine so the air fuel was running 17 18 19 20s on full throttle so that's not good. So if this guy's doing pulls, uh, after his tuner told him the tune was complete, so, cause I did verify, I called him and 
he said that yeah the tuner looked at, uh, at everything and he told him the tune was done and he's good to go so obviously it leaned out really really bad and especially with the, the m5 fuel race fuel uh, that makes it even worse the chances are higher for uh, engine damage if the tuning is not done correctly so in this case what happened was one most likely it was probably one rod that bent it could be multiple uh, but most likely it was just one one of the rods that bent that's why the motor seized up and you the starter can't turn it uh, you can't turn it manually we had multiple people multiple people try to to turn it um, and obviously when they took the the motor out there was no no fuel in there it wasn't flooded so you still can't turn the crank on that motor and that's already with uh, you know then obviously the injectors off the, the intake manifold off the spark plugs off there's no fuel coming out of there there's no fuel in in the um, combustion chamber so the combustion chamber will get way too hot when it's running that extreme amount of lean which is not enough fuel and then that would cause the uh, the engine damage which caused the rod to bend in this case so yeah uh, already now I finally put a tune that I made for this car to idle it is currently on M5 so I'm gonna tune it on M5 and then he does one on E85 map so I'm gonna tune it on E85 uh, after I do the M5 because it already has M5 I'm not gonna drain out the M5 to put E85 and then drain the E85 to put M5 so yeah this one uh, the motor sounds pretty good and uh, idling is good <laughs> Alright guys, so this is the uh, Q50 with the M5 and right now the uh, parking lot is extremely packed. We got too many cars here. So there's way too many cars in there right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start it off on the street and have it ready to go on the dyno whenever I do get a chance because I feel like today I might not be able to get to this car on the dyno. It might be tomorrow. There's not way too many things going on right now. I'm still gonna try and get to it today, but the, those cars are the priority over there, as in, like, they're literally in the way. So, I gotta finish my own stuff, and if I see a chance where uh, I'm not using my dyno, and they d suddenly move the cars, then I'll probably throw this one on the dyno. But uh, chances are pretty small today for that. Hello guys, I have a 2004 G35 6-speed. Thank you very much for it being a 6-speed. You are amazing, Dylan. Thank you very much. I like the color in your car. Uh, you told me it's repainted, but they did a really great job. So this one, uh, stock injector, so 91 octane, has a full exhaust, uh, stock intake with the, uh, I believe a K&N filter, uh, dual exhaust, and uh, yeah, I'm about to do a baseline guys so i went ahead and did the baseline i already talked to the owner of the car 239 wheel horsepower i let off at 6000 rpm red line is 6600 rpm stock red line and uh, this one's just running very very lean so i went ahead and explained it to him so i didn't take it to red line because absolutely no point it was too lean so too dangerous and uh i just created a file and i just uploaded it and i'm gonna do a first pull so this one is all done new line is the blue one it made 250 wheel horsepower so we gain 11.4 horsepower to the wheels the maximum torque before was 234 now it's 246 11.7 torque to the wheels and that's just peak horsepower so this one really really needed a tune because it's running extremely lean so i know that it was running sluggish so when he goes on a test drive he's gonna feel a huge difference that's, pre that's pretty good for stock intake. There it goes. Very, very happy. Very happy. Super, extremely happy. And you said you watched my YouTube video, so Mr. Dylan, you'll probably see yourself on my YouTube video. Thank <laughs> you. 
Similar, but anyway, that guy basically was trying to say that. I have this 2019 Nismo Sentra, it's actually really, really cool. Uh, unfortunately, it's a CVT automatic, the most trash transmission Nissan ever made. They, they need to stop making it. Uh, this one is a turbo, and it came in because uh, they just got the car, I believe, a couple months ago when they bought it. It already had a check engine light. The codes are for the intake air temperature and intake and charge air temperature so this guy's trying to pass smog the car is completely stock 100 stock so um he only has those two codes obviously in california you can you cannot have any type of codes it has to be um zero codes yellow george uh, i know in some other states you're allowed to have one two maybe three codes so hey guys so i'm test driving the car now the the map sensor works uh, we got it straight from the dealer and it works perfectly. The code actually went away on its own about two seconds after I started the car. Uh, but now he uh, has a traction light, which actually won't let him pass smog. So he did tell us about the traction light and it still shows up. So I'm going to drive it for a little bit and uh, see if that traction light goes away as well. So at first I said there was two codes. Uh, but there's actually three codes. The, the two engine codes were for the intake air temperature and the charge temperature. So the charge one, like I said, was most likely going to go away once we fix the math, and it did. So two codes are out. There's one code left, which is on the traction control system. So uh, the first time I scanned it, I did not scan the uh, traction control system. Normally, you don't have to. Uh, but I'm using the uh, console 3 which is the dealer computer so this one scans everything at once so it does have a traction light uh, which I had forgotten that he did tell us so I'm gonna see if somehow that one also goes away after driving it guys okay, so actually it was not the traction control system um <clears throat> it's the turbocharger system so he told me it's the traction control so I'm assuming that's what the smog place told him because it's abbreviated abbreviated and it says tc so you would think it's traction control system it would make sense but in this case um i actually pulled over to read the actual description on the computer uh, because i was driving and it says um i forgot what it says but i know that is the two, uh <laughs> turbocharger it wasn't traction control so i was like okay so that's the only one that doesn't want to clear after i'm driving so I was like, okay, all the other codes are fixed, so it must know that something's wrong, obviously, with the turbocharger, so at a certain point, so I was like, okay, maybe the car just needs to actually hit boost, so I just went full throttle two times, and the code disappeared on its own, so I had it on the screen, it does update, I don't know how often it refreshes, maybe it refreshes every five seconds or ten seconds, but after I did two pulls, um the code just disappeared like just on the screen instantly i didn't do anything so yeah it looks like most likely this car is is ready to smog so hopefully it passes because this guy really needs uh the car smog and it's completely stock and it still smells brand new So guys, I have this 2012 G37 sedan, very, very clean. Mr. Jordan um, has stock intakes, has cats, just has a cat back exhaust. It made 288 wheel horsepower on 91 and 245 torque. So um, yeah, I'm uploading the first tune. 
and we'll see what it makes. What's up guys, so I just finished tuning that G37 and now I have this 370Z 2009 Nismo, very, very clean. It has a standard size colder intakes, Tomei exhaust, stock injectors 91, baseline 288, wheel horsepower torque 243, kind of similar to the one before this one. On this one, I think the the cats may be going out because they, they kind of smell. Um, the, the cats on the previous car were actually very, very good. Uh, they didn't really smell bad. These kind of smell bad after doing a pull. So they may be going out. I'm thinking like just the beginning of it. All right, we are at 295 wheel horsepower. So the 370Z made 300 wheel horsepower, 12 uh, wheel horsepower gains. The maximum torque before was 243, now it's 251. And that is it. guys have this VR30 right here this one is bone stock Q50 no modifications done to it uh, the wastegate actuators uh, one of them was replaced it was actually pretty loose it was making a lot of noise and now it's pretty tight um, it's a little bit better when looking at the values in the uh, data logging but it needs a relearn because they're still way off, but it's better. But it's definitely not where it should be, and of course, no more noises. Guys, I have this 2017 Q50 Silver Sport slash base model. Uh, the baseline, I actually posted it before, is a 320 and 319 torque. Um, this one has a heat exchanger. Now, I don't remember what I said in the previous video. And it has a Tomei exhaust and uh, it has uh, full cats so we're gonna see what this one does 49,000 miles let's see how good this motor is and uh, obviously it's on 91 <laughs> another vr 2019 all right so i haven't tuned it yet i did a baseline which is right here 363 pretty good for a, a base model but of course it does have some very minor mods um when i opened the hood it smelled like coolant he said work was done to it about a week ago you know that's not, that's fine normal it smells like coolant but not a week later maybe the same day the next day that's about it so um yeah the car does uh overheat a little bit so there's probably still air in the system uh, supposedly the shop that did it doesn't have the right tools to do it so we're gonna bleed it here and uh hopefully that's it um this car it's a 2019 but it seems like the turbos do smoke a little bit already so that sucks <laughs> but that's how it is, that's how you bring it to me, and then that's how these VRs are, so. We got the intakes right here. Floor valve. Is there, is there a roach in there? What? It's a roach. <laughs> There's a roach in there. It looks like a cockroach to me. Nah, it's, nah, it's, it's rubber, no? Or, what is it? It's just foam. Foam? Yeah. Maybe What's that was foam? clogging it up? Yeah. Hey 
guys. So there you go, before and after. That's the torque right there. This here is a Q50, I'm not sure what year, 14 or 15. Uh, she brought her car in because um, cold star is acting pretty weird. It wants to turn off and then even warmed up, it's acting up. I believe George has had this car for a few days now and uh, he just keeps finding problems. And then everything looked like it was fixed, but it still does the uh, problem here. But um, after finding a bunch of different things, I was able to I uh, do some testing on it myself just to help them out to get the car out of here. Of course, I don't get paid for that. But um, I found out that cylinder one and three are not shooting any fuel at all. And the injectors were replaced. It's another fuel rail and it's another harness as well. Um, and of course, another computer was tried, you know, a bunch of sensors. Math sensors are different. Uh, they tested out throttle bodies. Um, almost every other sensor, even the crank sensor was changed. This was of course before the cylinder 1 and 3. Uh, I tested them. So once I tested that, I told George and um, he's going to go ahead and check the wiring. He thinks that maybe something got in there and, uh, you know, kind of chewed up maybe some of the wiring. So maybe it's like a little exposed and something's touching or not a good ground somewhere, but he's going to check it out. You guys, I have this 2008. Uh, 350Z automatic. It is on uh, E85. UPT three-inch intakes. Uh, single exit exhaust. Uh, came here for a torque converter replacement, and um, for I guess drivability on certain spots, like uh, kind of when you, when the tranny shifts or when you let off the gas. So uh, I went ahead and looked at it before uh, they replaced the torque converter. Uh, for George, I went ahead and did that and uh, it's, This is tuned by somebody else uh, from another state. I'm not sure they did it through email or when they come down here on their dyno day But honestly this one it, it drives good. Uh, I would say yeah, definitely uh, definitely the tune problem, but I Would say it's a minor problem So this car would you know survive for a very long time. It's more of a perfection type of thing so the car drives yes, it's just Obviously, the owner let us know about the problem, so I guess it's it's noticeable. But even if uh, for some reason he never got that retuned or fixed, uh, the, the, that that specific issue doesn't cause like the engine to blow or anything. It's just very very annoying. So after the the torque converter went ahead and and drove it real quick, and it the torque converter is obviously fixed, <laughs> um, but it still has that problem. Uh, with the tune so he said to go ahead and and retune it and you know what I was flashing the ECU in the middle of this <laughs> video and I don't know if it even went through so I'm just gonna flash it again so I gotta wait again actually I don't think it flashed oh yeah I was about to start it on the the other guy's tune again <laughs> um, yeah so I'm uploading a tune right now that I just made and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start tuning it and see if that problem goes away. Um, I've seen it before from other tuners. It's, it's literally just a tuning issue. So I'm gonna get going on this one here so he could pick up his car. So I have this 2018 Q Coupe. Uh, this is tuned by somebody in the East Coast, like way, way in the East Coast, like far, far, far in the corner. Um, they did an email tune and he's just, uh, yeah, so somewhere in the East Coast, he's just not happy with their tune. He said if it was faster before the tune. Um, so he sent me a log after he scheduled with me. And uh, the car, like kind of like the 350ZHR before this, like it ran fine. But um, obviously, if he's saying that it was better without a tune, that doesn't make any sense. But drivability, yeah, it's normal. I did look at the log, and I found some good amount of things. I also found out that it looks like... Uh, the transmission was tuned in correctly so I didn't mention that to him until he came today and I told him that first you know this is what I saw on the log um, and then he's like you know what I actually have my transmission replaced after he got it tuned by them so he's kind of like well that makes sense because it happened after he got it tuned with them 
Um, they didn't tune it correctly, so yeah, I, I saw that in the logs that he sent me. So I'm gonna obviously, you know, obviously it's a fresh new file, so I already have it ready for him. I'm gonna upload it and we'll see what it makes. But with their tune, it makes 375 horsepower, 392 torque, which is um, pretty decent to be honest. But he said it was faster before. <laughs> First adjustments, 410, 449 torque. Very good, so thank you.